13 people cut from WWE on Friday, including two guys that went on to wrestle on 205 Live after they'd been cut. And uh, what do you make of this, Dave, besides the obvious? Well, it's really interesting because, um, you know, I mean, essentially what it is is that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Paul Le- uh, so Paul Levesque and Shawn Michaels didn't have anything to do with the cuts. I mean, it was it was done by Vince McMahon, um, Bruce Pritchard, and John Laurinaitis. And um, the basic gist is is that uh, you know, I mean, NXT is going to change um, in some ways, and they they think that the competitors are a lot of the competitors are too small and too old. And it's back to the, you know, when they first started developmental, because I, you know, know this from obviously Jim, uh, you know, Jim Ross was a very key part of this. The original idea of NXT was to be developmental and to get guys with the mentality of we're trying to find people who can main event WrestleMania. That's always what they say. And their feeling is, you know, they have very, you know, even though Brian Danielson main evented WrestleMania and CM Punk never did but could have, um, they have a, you know, the guys, what that means is they want more Roman Reigns looking guys. And um, they, you know, the basic feeling is is that they they lost the war and now it's time to get it back to, you know, it's kind of, I don't want to say, it is what it is. It's like this is the aftermath, and this is the new direction, and the new direction is younger guys and bigger guys. Um, now, of course, they they when you look at some of the firings, I mean, one of the guys they fired was seven feet tall, but you know, I mean, he probably wasn't doing well in, in the developmental system. That was the Zachariah Smith, um, you know, and and being seven feet tall isn't necessarily to your advantage either because. Unless you're like really great and you're seven feet tall, um, what's the purpose of having a giant when you've got Omos? And um, you know who's and, unless you're bigger than Omos and they don't have anyone bigger than him, so a smaller giant is like superfluous. It doesn't you know, especially if they're you know unless you're, you're somebody who's really really good. So you know that that's one of the you know they did they did cut him. But the general feeling is is that uh, you know that that. NXT has ventured out to be, you know, it was it was to be something before, you know, which is to be the originally it was the competition for Ring of Honor, and then it became the competition for AEW when it was when Ring of Honor started showing life, um, and and the independent scene in the United States started showing life. This was supposed to be them getting that fan base, and then it became the competition for AEW, and and you know now. We'll, it is, you know, what happened happened, and and now they want to get it back to what it was, and so there's there's cuts that were made, and then these were the guys that were cut, and there's going to be changes, and and uh, you know there's a there's there's I, you know power plays a weird word, there's just there's divisive uh, uh, opinions about wrestling among the key people, and they're fighting for Vince's ear. And this is the ear that Vince has this week. Next week, he may listen to somebody else's ear and may go in a completely different direction. But that's what happened this week. So when you say get NXT back to what it was, you're talking, we're going back to May of 2012. When it was just I don't. Wacky FCW. No, 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 not that. No, no, no. The idea of that they're going to, they want, they want guys who can be, they uh, I'll get you the wording. Hold on. Um, so I don't. Miss well, my it. point is, it sounds like 2012, because if you're talking like 2016, when you had the Sami Zayn's and all of the stars from the indie scene, I mean, we're clearly not going back to there. We have to go further back. Yes, we do have to go further back. It's, it's yes. the, the period when they had, you know, um, Curtis Axel and those guys, the first the first run of guys. Yeah. Um, Tyson Kidd, although Tyson Kidd was was actually on the main roster, but um it's the the wording is um no more midgets, no one starting in their thirties. They want people who can be 
box office attractions and main characters. So that's what they are looking for now. Bo- you know, and of course, box office attraction is one of those self fulfilling prophecies. If you only well, believe obviously, certain- I mean, everything that they said in that is is their opinion of what wrestling is. Yeah, and it is interesting. It is interesting that at the same time that this is all going down, that they're um, you know making a big play to keep Adam Cole. Um, but I think that that's again. Um, you know, I mean, Adam, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule, and Adam Cole's an exception to the rule. And also, um, the perception would not be good to lose. I think the perception on WWE Wait, be, hold on a second. I love yeah. Adam Cole, huge fan. In what way is he an exception to the rule? He was up on the main roster for that period when they were doing NXT and Survivor Series, and he got like two weeks of main roster television, and then we never saw him again. Yeah, but that was it's only... four years. He, he's not been an exception to the rule. No, he's an exception to the rule that they didn't cut him, that they're not looking at cutting a guy like that. They're looking at keeping a guy like that, and they want to feature a guy like that. That's why. Well, I mean, to a degree, I mean, Kushida's not a big guy. Kyle O'Reilly's not a big guy. I mean, they didn't get rid of every small guy. Okay, but but I don't really... Pete Dunne, small guy. Okay, but I don't think that those other guys that you all mentioned have much of a future outside of NXT. I don't see Kushida I don't think Adam Cole has a future outside of NXT. Well... He's going to have to because I cannot. I cannot imagine him staying in NXT because if he does, what's the point? He might as well leave if it's going to be NXT. I mean, I was under the impression that they promised him a main roster spot, and they told the writers that they want uh, they want storylines for Adam Cole on the main roster on Raw or SmackDown. So I think that was part of the the meeting that happened uh, yesterday. So. Um, so he's the exception to the rule. I haven't heard that for Kushida or Kyle O'Reilly or Ciampa or Gar- Gargano or anyone like that. I mean, I think that the feeling with Adam Cole is is that, um, like I said, I think that because of who is coming in and probably more people coming in and, and also, you know, besides the obvious names that we know of, there's also probably going to be some people from these cuts when their non-competes come in. And, um, you know, Renee Young, who's going to be, um, you know, another ex who's probably going to show up soon when her non-compete ends. A one-year non-compete, which is still just the most mind-blowing thing I've ever seen. A one-year non-compete where you're not getting paid. I mean, that would never hold up in court. But she didn't challenge it, and the year's almost up, so there's no point in challenging it now. But... Um, so, so the basic situation is is that um, there's going to be a lot of people starting there, and I think that they don't want Adam Cole would, could go there. Well, that's exactly why he's the exception to the rule. It's it's I don't believe that if he gets called up to the main roster that he's going to be an exception to the rule for more than like a month. But I you're do probably, believe I do you're pro- believe you're, that you're, you're you're probably you're probably right. I, I don't believe think- that they recognize that he is seen by a portion of their fan base as the biggest star in NXT. And they don't want another one of those to go to AEW. And also, I don't think that they want another situation like with Aleister Black, where some guy who they didn't do anything with, who, you know, there were people who pushed to do something with, and they never did anything with. And then all of a sudden he shows up on the other show, and he's like, you know, being portrayed as a big star and getting over. And that makes, you know, it kind of exposes them. I mean, I mean, Black exposes them a lot. And, you know, Miro exposed them to a degree. I wouldn't say a lot because they did push Miro at one point. Um, but, you know, whenever a guy comes from WWE and goes there and doesn't and does much better than they did in WWE, the question becomes, well, why didn't you do better in WWE? I mean, wh- why why didn't you figure this out with him? And in some cases, you can go, well, we have a deeper roster. Our talent's better. You know, I mean, I'm, you know, that's whether you can argue that, but that's part of it. But when it happens over and over again, you know, there becomes a question. And I don't think there's any doubt that Adam Cole in AEW is going to be a major player. I mean, I, don't, I, I cannot, could not imagine that he wouldn't be. And so I don't think that, that, that I don't think that this month, especially because again, like, you know, he's, he's free to go in what, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, whatever they agreed to stay for. So, I mean, if he shows up in a month, you know, like at the same time as everybody else shows up and he's on that show in New York or, you know what I mean? It's like, um, and, and you know, the people are going to in New York are going to go crazy for him. You know, it's a bad, it's a bad look right now. And right now, you know, again, 
at WWE shows sometimes. They, now, they didn't Friday, but um, they, did, they did on Monday in Chicago. I mean, there were AEW chants at that show. And, you know, that's never fun when you're, you know, WWE and their chant. You know, it's happened before, but it's never what they, you know, like. So, um, you know, that's the basic gist. And, um, you know, the, 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 the kind of the line has been that when, when they get to NXT, we have to um, teach them not to do indie style. And then when we come to the main roster, we have to teach them not to do NXT style. And that becomes a double whammy, too, because that's the mentality right now. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.